Well, welcome back. The House Judiciary Committee reportedly considering a vote on Thursday to hold Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg in contempt of Congress. That's for refusing to provide any internal communications on the company's censorship. Uh, uh, Democrat presidential candidate R. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. joined me on Sunday Morning Futures, slamming the White House for telling social media companies what's a censor. What we now know is that the, uh, the White House had deployed an army of federal agencies, including the CIA, the FBI, the, uh, uh, the DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, the IRS, and many others, to threaten Facebook, Google, and, uh, and Twitter with withdrawing their Section 230 immunity, which is an existential threat. Those con con companies cannot exist without that immunity. Joining me right now is Tennessee Senator Bill Haggerty. He's a member of the Senate Banking, Foreign Relations, Budget, and Appropriations Committee. Senator, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks very much for Good being morning, here. Uh, you've got a Democrat daring to disagree there. Uh, and uh, finally, somebody on the, the left uh, talking about what we all agree is wrong, that the U.S. government colluded with Twitter and social media to suppress truth and amplify lies right before the election. Yes, it's, uh, it, it's an absolutely amazing fact that this administration wants to continue suppressing American speech, continuing to censor us. Uh, I put forward legislation to address this, to force the administration to disclose the fact uh, when they censor American speech, when they cooperate with big tech like Meta. Uh, Meta, again, is refusing to disclose this fact because I think there's something very deeply wrong there. Uh, we need to continue to press here. Um, I, I saw Robert Kennedy's uh, interview with you. I think it's uh, incredibly, incredibly depressing to Americans to find out that this White House thinks that they ought to be able to just step in and force these big tech companies to silence Americans with whom they disagree. Always, it seems to be, those that oppose this White House, that oppose their position, and particularly conservative positions here in America. Uh I mean, this is an attack on our fundamentals, the First Amendment of free speech. What can you do about this? Well, uh, again, if we would uh, put my legislation in place, if I could get Democrats to join me on this, and again, they've blocked my legislation now four times on the floor of the United States Senate, but this would force the administration to disclose any time that they cooperate and collaborate with big tech to censor American speech. There may be certain occasions, and my legislation allows for this, where national security interests are involved, that it should be allowed. But we've got to have a full disclosure when this should occur. That would allow Americans to actually step up and protect themselves. You know, you look at the legislation that I put in place, it's very simple, it's a light touch, and it would address what we found out uh, through the course of litigation right now. On July 4th, uh, a judge in Louisiana just put forward a, a ruling that would block this type of behavior, this type of censorship of American speech. The Biden administration immediately appealed it, but going through the disclosure process there in that court, we found multiple occasions where the Biden administration has worked with big tech to suppress American speech. It's got to come to an end. Well, look, Senator, we've been talking about the policies of this administration all morning long, and one of the most incredible that we are uh, expecting is this administration reportedly considering lifting sanctions on China. Uh, they would lift the sanctions on Chinese police station if Beijing commits to fighting the fentanyl crisis. I, I just spoke with Secretary of State, uh, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, and we know that Anthony Blinken, uh, the current Secretary of State, said that he is proposing this deal. And he came up with the idea while in Beijing back in 2020, the Trump administration placed these sanctions on the station, saying that it was participating in a mass surveillance campaign against the Uyghurs in that country. Uh, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo joined me in the last hour, and here's what he said about this. Watch. We should just do things that work. We should do things that make sense, not things that make us feel better or start a set of negotiations, which is likely what the Chinese will agree to. They'll sit down at the table in exchange for having an entity that is conducting horrible, horrible crimes against the Uyghur people inside of China uh, and lifting the sanctions. Senator, you know the Chinese Communist Party. I, I mean, are you expecting them to do anything about climate change? Are you expecting them to do anything about fentanyl? And yet the Biden administration believes this and is willing to lift sanctions even after all of the aggression coming from CCP in just the last year. 
Maria, you, you've been so good about covering the predatory behavior of the Chinese Communist Party, particularly here in America. They are killing more than 100,000 Americans a year with drug overdoses. They're shipping fentanyl into this country. And the fact that Tony Blinken is willing to offer to back off of rightfully imposed sanctions against humanitarian violations that the Chinese Communist Party is putting forward in exchange for stopping to kill, stop, stop the killing of American youth, it's just preposterous. Uh, you have been right about this. Uh, Secretary Pompeo is absolutely right about this. We should be standing strong right now. Uh, I've dealt with the Chinese Communist Party, as, as, as did Secretary Pompeo, when we both served in the Trump administration, dealing with them in Asia. Uh, they only respect strength. The Biden administration is projecting anything but strength. They're projecting weakness at every turn. And when I hear that they're offering, again, to basically lift sanctions in exchange for asking, for begging, I should say, the Chinese Communist Party to stop killing American youth is preposterous. We should be standing strong right now, pushing back, not lifting sanctions, but imposing more sanctions than their violations of our own sovereignty here in America. Well, instead, the Justice Department is suing Texas and Governor Greg Abbott uh, over uh, what they claim is his use of a floating border barrier uh, as he efforts to stop the illegal migrants coming into his state, Senator. Um, your, your thoughts on, on the state of the wide open border, which, of course, you've been to plenty. Well, Maria, you're the best on the border. Uh, it is a absolute tragedy that most of the media will not cover. The Biden administration stepping in and stopping the governor of Texas from trying to protect his own state and, frankly, from protecting America against the constant violations of our own sovereignty, violations from massive criminal cartels that are invading our country at every turn working in cooperation with the Chinese Communist Party again to send fentanyl into the country. The fact that Greg Abbott is stepping up and addressing this should be applauded here in America. Rather, the Biden administration wants to step up, yeah. and the only laws they want to enforce are against Americans trying to protect America, as opposed to cartels trying to invade America. It's absolutely shocking, and again, I just think it shows the depravity of this administration. It's incredibly disturbing. We'll keep a spotlight on it, Senator, and it's always a great uh, opportunity to catch up with you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Maria. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. We love you all. Please support McCad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.